Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you bringing insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now baiting the planet and their effect on us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. The Evolution of Relationship Many human constructs and structures are undergoing major reorganization as old realities give way to the new ambient frequency of our time. Relationships are especially challenged. Our internal relationship and what we have previously identified with is profoundly affected. As we have more light to see by, many of us are coming out of denial. Previously hidden patterns, coping mechanisms, and misconceptions are emerging from our shadow. We find we've viewed ourselves as being many things that we're not. Among those, ego, damage, and conditioning. We've identified with gender or position in the family. Youngest, oldest, smart one, pretty one, and so on. We've associated with race or social standing, defined ourselves by wealth or lack thereof, who our parents were, who we married, or education and occupation. We've made decisions about ourselves based upon childhood trauma. We're triggered into past events by stimulus in the present, taking us out of the moment and who we are or can be now. We live in fear and avoidance rather than spontaneous expression. Guilt and shame have driven us into denial, projection, and polarization. All of this has become the toxic soup through which we relate to ourselves, each other, and the world around us. As we recognize and choose to release the things that we're not, what we are is increasingly unfolding. Standing in the truth of what we are is very empowering. As we leave behind the limitations of identifying with what we're not, we may release restrictions such as guilt and shame. The natural result is entering the high frequency of authenticity and sovereignty. Sounds great, no? There is a complication. Nothing exists in a vacuum and no forward movement can take place, regardless of the frequency present, without our conscious, active participation. It would be lovely if all we had to do was be alive at this time and we'd magically evolve without upsetting the apple cart of our carefully orchestrated existence. The fact is, our entire lives are built upon a foundation of presumed truths that are now being exposed as either partial truths or outright lies. The increase in ambient light is revealing what was previously hidden, adding more factors to the equation. As our personal shadow and denials emerge, we're left with difficult choices. We could either try to maintain the status quo by shoving the data further into denial, locking down around it, or we can start the process through it, thereby reframing our identity and our approach to the world. As we reframe reality, the natural result is a rise in personal frequency. What's held in suspension at one frequency becomes fallout at another. We find things thought to be indisputable fact are rapidly becoming false as structures fail, causing the rules to change. Nationalities, cultures, religions, party affiliations, and other structures we based our identities on are rapidly falling to dust. This leaves us in a collective chaotic identity crisis with no way to relate impacting interpersonal relationships in shocking ways. Personal relationships have mostly been based upon old false identities, rules, and mores. If you were my true friend, you would, or you are my husband and therefore you will. Historically, interactions have been based on patterns and damage rather than authenticity and sovereignty. When no longer subject to old patterns, it's shocking to discover how much those around us have used them to manipulate us. We often come to realize that those supposedly closest to us have never really known who we are, but only our patterns and how to control us through them. When we no longer dance to their tune, the tendency is to turn up the volume on attempts to engage the old patterns and regain control of our behavior. When we continue to stand in truth rather than participate in the old codependent dysfunction, it puts relationships under pressure. Under increasing pressure, all things will eventually show their weak spots and break down around them. Relationships are no different. 
another person's increasingly desperate attempts to bully us back into the old relationship become blatantly irrational. What formerly may have appeared to be a reasonable adult suddenly morphs into an abusive, enraged toddler throwing a tantrum. You're not the man I married. No, no, I'm not. Deal. And the war begins in earnest. We find ourselves in major power struggle, but no one can win. Whether a marriage, friendship, or business relationship, once it reaches this level of discord, the tendency is to polarize against each other and drag colleagues, friends, and family along for the ride. By its very nature, polarization is low frequency and diametrically opposed to unity consciousness and evolution. Entering a polarized state can cause entire structures, be they families, societies, or corporations, to destabilize and fall. This conundrum has several predictable outcomes. One, the person evolving beyond the old way of relating buckles under the pressure and drops back into the prior way of being. Now this may work for a while, but once a thing is seen, it can't be unseen. The other party may be pleased at appearing to have regained control, but the person that buckled will continue to see the old manipulations and injustices. They'll come to resent the lost authenticity and sovereignty. The relationship will erode beyond repair. In another outcome, the person trying to maintain the status quo and not evolve might let go of the old way of relating, begin to take responsibility for their own patterns, address their damage, and embrace their shadow. This will allow them to evolve along with their partner and renegotiate the relationship at a higher frequency and therefore more evolved functioning. The third option in the event one chooses not to devolve and the other refuses to evolve, it's time to discern appropriate proximity. Often, the kindest thing to do is to agree to disagree and dissolve the association. If one does not, the discrepancies in frequency will start to poison all concerned. In nature, clear down to the subatomic level, conflicting frequencies repel each other. Should they remain in proximity, the resulting disharmony erodes the structure. By remaining in incompatible relationships, we erode our health on all levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. This frequency discrepancy relationship phenomenon is by no means restricted to marriage. We're starting to experience everywhere. Within family, friendship, or business relationships, we're all being affected. Yet there's nothing wrong. Rather, it's a time of differentiation. No one is right or wrong. It's just holding a position beyond its shelf life as we evolve. When in college pre-med class, I watched a film on cell division. First, all the happy little chromosomes were swimming around in the cell in seemingly random fashion. Suddenly, they all paired up and just like little soldiers, formed a line down the middle of the cell. The cell membrane pinched off from the top and bottom, and the pairs split up, going to opposite sides of the dividing cell. The cell completed its division. Where there was one cell, there are now two. Within each new cell, the chromosomes divide into pairs and go about their random swimming. But the original two from the mother cell never meet again. At any stage of cell division, should one set of chromosomes fail to split up, the new cells become sick and either die or are destroyed by white blood cells. As above, so below. This same principle applies to interpersonal relationships. It's nothing new, but at this time of rapidly rising ambient frequency, it's happening much more quickly. We simply no longer have the grace to drag our feet through the transition. Either you're on the appropriate side of the dividing cell, or you're not. Once the division is complete, if you're not in your proper place, it impacts everything. To the degree we resist the process, pressure builds, and we suffer greatly. In effect, we're trying to move against nature and hold back the tide. We're on the losing end of that equation, and the tide will wash us out of the way. Not only are we undergoing rapid cell division, we're also starting to differentiate. A fertilized zygote divides into identical cells for only so long before the cell starts to take on differing characteristics based upon future function. They start to form heart cells, liver cells, skin cells, and so on. 
Just so, the body of humankind is starting to shift from individuals designed for their future functioning within the whole. As the cells of the body start to take on the characteristics of differing or organs, they need to gather based on function. A heart cell in the liver is counterproductive, as it tries to beat while everyone around him will be processing toxins. The poor heart cell will be identified as foreign to the organ and eliminated. So as individuals, how do we actively participate in cell division and differentiation? How do we discern appropriate proximity in the new world emerging? This takes us back to the beginning of the, our discussion. Know thyself. None of this can be done without uncovering and standing in the truth of who we really are. It's time to become introspective and brutally honest. Before we move forward, we must face what we've become as opposed to our true design. This is a sticky wicket, as the distortion runs deep and has been imposed for generations. To the degree we're thorough in our processing, we can become accurate in our discernments. There are many hidden places where we may have been making our experience about the guy next to us and entering into the victim stance. My husband won't let me, or my boss says I have to. The victim stance is low frequency and quite frankly, a cop out. Look more deeply into how the belief in your own victimhood serves to keep you from facing your responsibility and claiming your power. Is it easier to be the victim rather than run the risk of accepting the consequences of your lack of action? Is victimhood preferable to sitting ba setting boundaries and running the risk of appearing to be the bad guy? Or does remaining victim prevent you from having to face that scary thing known as change? It's important to recognize that we came exactly as what we need to be to perform our function. Our entire lives have been spent trying to become what we already are, perfect. In the process, we've buried our true expression under the expectations and demands of others. We've lost ourselves to conditioning, damage, and false identities. As we process through our damage, misconceptions, and false identities, we may find we're at a heart cell trying to live in the liver. The liver cells are trying to get us to conform and process toxins like good little liver cells, but it's our nature to beat. Don't stick around until you lose yourself to the crowd or polarize against each other. Discern appropriate proximity. There's nothing wrong with you or those around you. You're simply not with your tribe. At this point, it's easy to go into what I call the yabbits. Yeah, but I've been in this company most of my adult life. I might lose my retirement. Or, yeah, but if I divorce, I'll have to split up my assets. Or, yeah, but I don't want to lose my position in the church. Or, yeah, but what will my family think of me? Remember, disharmony erodes the structure, compromising our health and well-being on all levels. What good does it do to stifle our natural expression to preserve something we may not live to enjoy. Sometimes it does come down to your money or your life. It can be surprising to realize how much energy and life force goes into living a lie. We can always make more money. If we're standing in the high frequency of authenticity and sovereignty, it can become amazingly easy to do so. It may only take a small adjustment to stand in the truth of who we are. Often it requires major change. I won't lie to you, change is never easy. We may need to leave all that we have known and stand in the empty for a time. But remember, dear friends, your tribe is out there, and you'll be drawn to them and them to you. Most likely, you're already hearing them call. It's simply the way life works. Trust life. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. To revisit this or any of our past episodes, visit our archives at www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. If you'd like to find out more about me, my school, and the evolutionary tools we offer, visit www.findyourpathhome.com. Until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.